President Wang Xifu, Deputy Director James Liang, distinguished guests, friends, and Audrey Tang, Taiwan's Digital Minister. I am delighted to take part in today's APEC Forum on Entrepreneurship for the Future of Work, Accelerating Regional Economic Recovery and Digital Inclusion for Women and Youth in the Post-Pandemic Era. I look forward to exchanging ideas and opinions with all partners from this exciting field of entrepreneurship. The Ministry of Digital Affairs, MODA, was established in response to the need to use digital tools to achieve resilience for all. What is resilience? It refers to the ability to quickly adapt, to respond and recover from any adversity, learning from this experience and strengthening oneself. As part of this commitment, the MODA is advancing societal and industrial development, enhancing cybersecurity and promoting social inclusion so that we can do the digital transformation work with the people, not just for the people. And we have integrated the support from communications, cybersecurity, information, the internet and media to enhance the government's infrastructure and economic and national transformation foundations. In other words, the MODA is not to become a top-down regulatory or supervisory agency, but rather a powerful MODA or motor. Indeed, many businesses face the choice of transformation or elimination. So sometimes the cost will be high as it takes time to find the right path toward transformation. And different industry participants have unique operational needs and resources. As a result, each path toward digital transformation will differ. So the assistance of an advisor or experts with an understanding to how to deploy digital tools to point the way for industrial partners that's invaluable. To that end, the MODA's Administration for Digital Industries, the ADI, has established a T-Cloud platform, which integrates the interagency processes of the ministries, including finance, interior, and economic affairs, into a single platform. So just like an online shopping site, medium enterprises, small ones, micro ones, can directly purchase a digital transformation solution from T-Cloud, reducing the threshold for such businesses to introduce digitalization. If the MISMEs do not know how to select suitable solutions, there will be also online experts who can provide real-time assistance. One example, the Boren Food, located next to the Chikan Tower in the southern Taiwan's Tainan city, is a traditional medicine pharmacy run by the same family for six generations now. It sports a distinctive storefront, combining a nostalgic feel with hipster style, beloved by the younger generations. Now, more than five years ago, the current owner, Zhou Jianwen, started to transform the operation of the company. He adopted a complex management model, including not just traditional medicines, but also dietary supplements. The creation of new type of specialist storefronts, combining medicinal cuisine in addition to medicine. So the traditional chicken herbal soup, milk fish belly soup, spicy bean curd, these were very popular. However, before the introduction of digital transformation, the ordering of those ingredients, delivering on those orders, creating reports were all manual tasks. That was very time consuming and error prone. As such, Boren Food adopted T Cloud to choose the online POS and sales inventory management systems provided by the domestic catering specialist information service operator, LaFresh Information. Through LaFresh systemized operations, the meal ordering process became much more fluid and far less likely to result in errors. And a multitude of payment methods accepted reflected actual consumer needs, and we saw the store increase its turnover by about 30%. In addition, the data provided by the cloud services also helped the company achieve precision with the management of its raw materials, resulting in successful digital transformation of a very traditional store. 
The T Cloud has rolled out 15 categories of cloud based solutions, ranging from opening online stores, marketing, promotion, telecommuting, business management, customer service, market analysis, and so on. And we also encourage MISMIs to use the governmental digital point subsidy mechanism. The T Cloud program officially went online July 1st, 2021, and had been used by more than 32,000 enterprises by the end of September as of 2022. Other than encouraging existing information service providers to transform systems and solutions into cloud services available through T-Cloud, the Digital Cloud Service R&D subsidy program from ADI also encourages such operators to continue innovating and developing intuitive ways to adopt cloud services to meet the demand of the various different businesses. Another example from the textile industry. In the past, it had an operational model whereby sales staff would carry suitcases, two big ones full of denim samples around the world, taking place in the trade fairs and shows and securing OEM production orders from abroad. If a client submitted an order, the factory would cut numerous small pieces of fabric that would then be mailed to customers to confirm their preferred style, color, and material requirements. And that was all before starting the sample production. So such a lengthy process demanded months of communication. But now with the rise of producers in Southeast Asia, together with the impact of the pandemic, many local textile factories saw a drop off in the orders. So last year, we helped a local company such as Frontier.cool to develop the fabric digitalization and cloud assistance platform. This allows those in the textile industry to upload fabric data directly to the Frontier.cool's textile fabric digital database. When proofing, brand operators and designers can just use a computer, a smartphone, and tablet to enter the specifications and use the platform's picture search function to enable them to quickly find the fabric they want and communicate the style and specifications to the textile plant in a real-time manner using the cloud assistance service. Using the database value-added AI and 3D virtual technologies, designers can observe changes in wrinkles and folds and see how patterns look as a simulated fabric is displayed worn by an individual on the screen of a mobile device. And this helped tremendously in the creation in the more precise products. So after Nianxing Textile introduced the digital cloud service last year, customer sampling time was reduced from more than 100 days to just 10 days. As a result, company sales staff were able to determine customer needs in a real-time fashion, respond with greater flexibility to adjustments, this enhanced the collaborative efficiency of the entire textile supply chain. Now, Frontier.core and Nianxing Textile are just two examples of the micro, small, and medium enterprises successfully embracing digital transformation through the Digital Cloud Services program. Many startups are here today, and we welcome everyone to make wider use of the T-Cloud resources to develop more innovative services to bolster the cloud services, ensuring that we're all used uh, in a more timely fashion, our services by the more enterprises and people around the world. It is inevitable that communication across the internet is the new reality after the pandemic. And businesses in Taiwan and around the globe, they're all facing the tide of digital transformation. Indeed, it made the pandemic made the people increasingly more comfortable with working and studying from home and from satellite offices. And this trend shows no sign of abating. A survey conducted by the International Professional Service Network, Deloitte, revealed that post-pandemic, the number of employees working from home in the U.S. fell only slightly from 64 to 51%. So as telecommuting and online collaboration are the new norm, digital competence, not just literacy, competence, will become a key requirement when looking for work in the future. A report by the global marketing intelligence firm, the IDC, 
and McKinsey Global Institute indicates that digital tools will be embedded in various different forms into the flow of the work and the various stages, for example, robotic process automation, RPA, will take over routine work. As a result, a minimum of 30% of content will be automated in nearly 60% of professions. So how to harness and apply technology so that people can focus more on other people and on decision making in the future. That will be a critical point of development for all entrepreneurs and governments to ponder. McKinsey also states that the demand for various new skill sets will become increasingly pressing in the post-pandemic era. Individuals with interdisciplinary skills and knowledge will be an important focus for business in their global competition. As such, in the future, talented individuals will need to have the learning ability across disciplines. Because we understand interdisciplinary talents are so key to digital transformation and innovation, the MODA has drafted related policies and measures to cultivate talent. Digital transformation will differ depending on the size of enterprise, the industry's characteristics and the directions of development. So our ministry will keep abreast of all developments utilizing the strengths of the public, private, academic, and research and civic sectors to build a truly interdisciplinary employment matchmaking model. Indeed, in the fourth stage of our advanced forward-looking infrastructure program, two elements involve the developments of digital talents. One addresses the training of digital talent and focus on cultivating AI application talent across industries. And the other is a digital and special technician talent development program seeking to promote the circulation, the talent circulation, the international exchange of related talent in Taiwan, especially in cooperation with the US. Last year, the Small and Medium Enterprise Administration and the Administration for Digital Industries this year, we collaboratively launched the Tea Ambassador Program, inviting industry practitioners to provide the younger generation with practical work experience in companies, as well as encouraging the involvement of those not previously involved in digital-related departments into cross-sectoral transformation. So we set up such courses for a minimum of 230 hours over 20 weeks, utilizing this ideation brainstorming between different disciplines to assist enterprise to innovate and optimize their business models. We also choose the practical learning skills to nurture these digital skills. So the integration, cross-discipline integration ability and workspace collaboration capabilities are cultivated. And these young people, the rising stars, the digital natives, become seeds for digital transformation in various industries. For example, after interning at Syscom Computer Engineering, a student from the Department of Diplomacy at NCCU took exams for four international certificates related to digital talent. So the talent learned computer programming languages, gained system development experience, and currently employed in net zero emissions related job. Another student from a Japanese language department interned in marketing in Galaxy Software Service Corporation. And the student initially had zero marketing experience when they graduated. But throughout the T Ambassador program, they learned to design advertising graphics, writing related articles analysis, and now a valuable full-time staffer in the GSS. Since the launch of the T Ambassador program in 2020, we have trained more than 1,300 young people as digital talent for enterprises. The latest program data indicates that after completing the training, the T Ambassadors earn an average monthly salary of around US 1,200, which is significantly above the average of a uh, person freshly graduated from undergrads and so it shows how urgently the industry needs the transformation talents. So the MODA promotes, in addition to talents, international circulation and exchange of such talents. So the domestic industry, the overseas digital economy industries, 
Developing inbound and outbound exchanges and talent matchmaking are all our business. We also continue to promote programs involving foreign students, taking up digital-related internships in the Taiwanese industrial sectors, and also local students undertaking remote internships at overseas companies. This encourages outstanding international talents to work in Taiwan and helps enterprises recruit and retain such talents while enhancing our global vision and professional skills of our homegrown peers, cultivating the talents digital industry needs while promoting the internationalization of local industries. I'm sure that there are many hidden talents and experts in the world connected by the internet. Previously, they may not have a complete or impressive academic background. Indeed, I'm a high school dropout. As such, the MODA adopts a certain degree of flexibility in our effort to recruit talent, substituting experience for academic background in the case of some outstanding IT or cybersecurity talents when determining the pay levels. So as I mentioned, I don't even have a high school uh, diploma. I quit after the second year in middle school. And anyone with better academic qualifications than the minister is welcome to submit a resume. So at the MODA, we believe any individual's invaluable work experience is a solid foundation for recruitment uh, with or without the academic backgrounds. In recent years, Taiwan's international profile has reached new heights. This international recognition can help our philosophy of Taiwan can help to show the world that the irrefutable proof that our islands of resilience is a trusted and reliable partner of digital democracies. Startups can be found in all industries and MODA will nurture each and every one of them within the framework of digital industries. I would say that the essence of startup involves examining existing systems and proposing new solutions. So how to adjust the legal or regulatory framework to promote innovation is an integral part of the work undertaken by our ministry. The MODA have established interministerial channels of communication within our government as we re-examine the business needs and whether there is space to adjust related criteria to address the problems faced by startups in terms of capital and legal reforms. And as all industries practice digital transformation, our ministry will also provide assistance evaluating the societal benefits and the monetary benefits to our economy. In addition, the information services and cybersecurity work transferred from other agencies to the MODA also provides ample opportunities for restructuring. So the ministry is willing and able to work with all the stakeholders to enhance our existing cybersecurity and information systems and regulatory regimes. So other than working with the regulators and supervisors in the government, we're also creating new innovation-friendly environments. The administration of digital industries will help to the information service and software startup employ innovative technologies. They develop digital transformation services and then we will do the matchmaking to find the actual needs for those developments. And the annual information service innovative competitions on the application as Institute of Higher Education in collaboration with the Ministry of Education is also a very friendly environment for newcomers to entrepreneurship and for academia industry cooperation. The incentive mechanism we utilize will support digital startup and accelerate proof of business commercial certification, expanding the size of the future market. The MODA was established in August this year. We're just like a startup within the government. We understand the experience of those involved in shining new ventures. At the same time, we have no baggage holding us back. So we are able to introduce new adjustments, new experiments, like a sandbox on the ministerial level. They are part of the course and our successful results will be shared with other governmental agencies. And so, we welcome uh, you to suggest to the MODA uh, your innovations, how to conduct our daily businesses better. Courage and a passion to forge fresh fields of opportunity is the hallmark 
of true innovation. It's also at the heart of efforts by the Moda to develop digital resilience for all. We seek to connect all our citizens with technologies. We will enhance industries and the security sector so we can continue to inspire the world through the Taiwan model. This journey is now underway and I hope everyone present today will join us so we can give the world an even better Taiwan. I trust the forum's next two days will be a sparkling success and here I sincerely wish you live long and prosper.